North Korea. Secretive. Unpredictable. One of the world's last totalitarian dictatorships. Now on the brink of becoming a nuclear armed state. Despite repeated sanctions, Kim Jong-un's weapons program is advancing. North Korea is developing its capabilities so quickly. His grip over the country appears to be tightening. To the outside world, he is a brutal despot. Here, he is worshipped like a god. But in a regime that demands absolute devotion, where disloyalty is punishable by death, how can we know how much of this is real, where this country is really heading under Kim Jong-un? This is one of the world's most isolated nations. For foreign journalists like me, access is rare. For six strictly controlled days, we were invited in. They wanted to show us their version of North Korea. Here, very peaceful place. So come here. The socialist paradise. Supposedly one of the happiest places on earth. where the people have everything they need. Eight hours a day, two walks, and everything is perfect. No mention here of the reality of public executions, food shortages, and total ideological control. But from the outset, it was clear the state security apparatus was all around. They wanted to examine all our equipment, they wouldn't tell us what they were looking for. Everywhere we went, we were shadowed by two government minders. Every interview was supervised. And for all of the smiling facade, the real face of the regime was never far away. Speak to those who have fled this country, and these displays of apparently hysterical adulation may not be everything they see. We're staying in a hotel on an island, in the middle of the Taedong River in Pyongyang. We're not allowed to leave it unaccompanied. It's for our own safety, we're told. The experience is surreal. Inside one of the planet's most repressive regimes to the soundtrack of 80s synth pop. Technically, we're here to cover the once-in-a-generation Workers' Party Congress. In truth, we're entirely in the hands of our government hosts. Every time we head out, we're required to wear press armbands to identify ourselves. We move around in convoy by media bus. We don't actually know where we're going. We appear to just be following the black car in front. We're told, we'll be told soon where we're heading. Out of the mist, the towering figures of Kim Jong-un's father and grandfather. All traffic is required to slow down here as a sign of respect.
After some initial confusion, we arrive at our destination. Throughout our time here, this will be the one constant, a series of men in dark suits, always nearby, almost always smoking. We're headed, we think, for the big event, but there's a catch. So this is where the big Congress is being held, or rather, over there is the outside of the building in which the Congress is being held. This is as close as we're allowed to go, so the far side of a six-lane road. From here we can see the portraits of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il and the outer perimeter of security. Instead, we were off to a showcase factory. Some of the workers enjoying a game of football outside as we arrive. We're herded into an exhibition on the visits of great presidents past. Not every image wholly convincing. Inside a made-for-TV production line. But if it all looked too good to be true, maybe it was. We asked this man what his job involves. Uh, he's not in this place actually, he works at another place, so he doesn't know. How will they? It's in itself in, in 